You're listening to CFRN, a community of believers who trade for a living. To learn more about who we are, what we do, and how we do it, call toll-free 1-866-928-3310, and we'll send you out a no-obligation information kit absolutely free. 866-928-3310. The CFRN E-Mini Futures Cast is now on Stitcher. Listen to us on your iPhone, Android phones, BlackBerry, and WebOS phones. Stitcher is smart radio for your phone. Find it in your app store or at Stitcher.com. Stitcher Smart Radio, the smarter way to listen to radio. You're listening to CFRN, the Christian Financial Radio Network. Today's broadcast is brought to you by Audible. Get a free audiobook download at www.audibletrial.com forward slash CFRN. Over 85,000 titles. Choose from mystery, romance, religion, science, technology, business, New York Times bestsellers, even children's books. You name it, Audible has it. With 85,000 titles to choose from, you're sure to find the perfect audiobook for yourself or to give as a gift, and it's absolutely free. Just point your browser to audibletrial.com forward slash CFRN. That's audibletrial.com forward slash CFRN. And become a part of the audiobook revolution by downloading your free audiobook today. AudibleTrial.com forward slash CFRN. Hey, trader, want to get rich quick? Well, good luck with that. If, on the other hand, you actually want to learn how to trade, the place to be is www.cfrn.net. Tune in Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. Eastern, for our daily devotional, and then spend the next three hours learning how it's done from professional traders who actually trade for a living. That's www.cfrn.net. Every trading day from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. Eastern. CFRN, a community of believers who trade for a living. Good afternoon, traders, and welcome back to the CFRN E-Mini Futures Cast. This is the daily broadcast of Indeterminate Length, where we discuss all things E-Mini, along with some really big ideas on the finer points of trading gold, bonds, crude, sugar, the euro, and even T-bills. Joining us today from our studios in Boston, Mr. Michael Bork. From our trading desk in Chicago, Mr. Burton Schlichter. Now, to get things started, let's go to our host and founder in Studio A, overlooking South Mountain, America's largest city park. Here's Dwayne. Good afternoon. Welcome back. Today is Wednesday, 27th day of January, 2021. Thanks so much for joining us. Whoever you are, wherever you are, we're just glad to have you right here, right now. If you can't see the screen I have up, go to our homepage at CFRN.net. On the right-hand side, click the big microphone, follow the instructions. You'll be registered in about 30 seconds, and that will give you one-click access to the show each and every day. On the days you're out of the office, away from the desktop, just point any internet connected browser to cfrn.net slash live. There you'll find a live real-time simulcast of the show as it unfolds. You just won't have access to the chat box. We want you to have access to the chat box so that you can ask questions and participate in the discussion. If you happen to be listening to this uh, on Apple iTunes or Spotify or iHeartRadio, any of the major podcasting platforms, it's 
perfectly fine to listen to just the audio, but if you also want to see the charts as we go through them today and discuss the various markets and everything that's happened in the markets today, hit pause on your podcast player and go to youtube.com slash CFRN. There you'll find over 1,600 archived daily shows. And if you point your browser there during the live broadcast from 12 noon to 2 p.m. Eastern every trading day, you'll be able to participate in the live show. Uh, today is Wednesday, and on Wednesdays, we spend an hour or so uh, talking with David Grant. He will be joining us today at 1 p.m. Eastern. So if you've tuned in early, uh, just a heads up, David comes on 1 p.m. Eastern every Wednesday. And today we'll be discussing the value of connecting people through crypto. The golden journey is about more than just generating wealth by adopting new technology. It's also about changing the standard of living for the least of these. So if you've come early, we invite you to stick around. If you have things to do, come back at 1 p.m. Eastern, bring your questions, and we'll talk with David Grant of The Golden Journey. Let's open with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your blessings, your mercy, and your grace. We come to you today asking for your guidance, wisdom, and support as we begin this broadcast. Help us to engage in meaningful discussion. Allow us to grow closer as a group and nurture the bonds of community. Fill us with your grace as we make decisions that affect all of our members and anyone who may be in our audience. And continue, please, to remind us that all that we do here today, all that we accomplish, is for the pursuit of truth, for the greater glory of you, and for the service of humanity. We ask that this in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, it is Happy Wednesday. So, let me give you the numbers from around the world. These are the cash markets, the indices. Uh, then Michael will pop in and give us a recap of what happened this morning in the live trading room. It's been a very active day. Even if you don't trade GameStop, it's been a very active day. And we'll talk about GameStop. Which GameStop, if you're not aware, uh, GameStop is to the world of video games, sort of what Blockbuster is to the world of videos. It was just a sleepy little company selling used videos. And some guys in Reddit got a hold of it and pumped it and that thing has ran up so right now it's trading at $317 uh, TD Ameritrade has halted trading because well, irrational exuberance doesn't even begin to describe it and things were already erratic uh, and then Elon Musk I believe it was piped in last night with a tweet and gave this thing another leg up but we'll, we'll talk about that later right now yeah, let me refresh this data currently here in the US the Dow is down 416 points. NASDAQ is down 236. S&P 500 is down 71. And the Russell 2000 is down 20. And for the Dow, that's a drop of over one and a quarter percent. For the NASDAQ, over one and three quarter percent. For the S&P 500, almost two percent. And for the Russell 2000, almost one percent. We spoke at length yesterday and for the last few days about this market finding a top, at least a temporary top, and then retracing back to the BBC. Price always reverts to the mean, and for us the mean is green, it's called the BBC, Bull Bear Cross, I'll show it to you in just a bit when we go to the charts. In the commodity basket, crude oil up 47 cents, trading 53.08 last, gain of almost 1%. Gold down six dollars and sixty cents, trading eighteen forty four thirty last. Silver down twenty four cents, trading twenty five twenty nine last. And for silver, that's a drop of almost one percent. In the Asian markets, at the close, Nikkei posted a gain of eighty nine points. Shanghai rose four. The Hang Seng fell ninety three. And in the European markets. At the close, the FTSE down 86, the DAX down 250, the CAC down 63. 
For the FTSE, that's a drop of over one and a quarter percent. For the DAX, it's a drop of almost two percent. And for the CAC, a little over one percent. That gives us a mixed day in Asia, a red day in the UK, and it is a big red radio Wednesday here in the US of A. With that, let's go to Michael and get a recap of what happened this morning in the live training room. Michael, if you're ready, we'll take it away. Okay. That's the sound of Michael not ready yet. So let's go ahead and jump to the daily chart of the S&P 500. And there it is. Yesterday, we just talked about the doji that we had. Now, the preceding few sessions, we also had dojis during the afternoon broadcast. But by the time the market closed for the session, futures close at 5 p.m. Eastern. Stocks close at 4 p.m. Eastern. So we finished yesterday with a doji. And when the Wednesday session started last night, Tuesday night at 6 p.m. Eastern, I posted in the discussion group a chart with this little line right here. Long above it, short below it. And we've been talking about the retracement to the daily BBC. Here it is. The big question now, do we close below it or above it? That will determine, will give us a great idea of what we can expect the remainder of this week. Sounds like Michael's here. So, Michael, go ahead and take the screens. Give us a okay. recap. I'll be back, guys. We'll go through all of the alerts pretty quickly today, and then at 1 p.m. Eastern, we'll chat with David. It's all yours. Thanks. All right. I got it. All right, everyone. Good afternoon. Today is Wednesday, the 27th day of January, 2021. Um, all right. So let's just get into the this. If you have not taken a free trial with us, go to the homepage here at CFRN.net. And on this home page, right down here, it says free five-day trial, no credit card required. If you click on that, it'll be brought to this page where it says eminitrainingschool.com. On this page, all we ask for is your name, your email, your phone number, and you can tell us the biggest training challenge. So we can tailor one-on-one training just for you. Hit the send button, you'll be sent a confirmation link. You must click on that confirmation link, okay? If you don't click the confirmation link, we don't know that you took the free trial, so you gotta do that. All right? All right. Recap. Um, we had a pretty good morning this morning. It was it was pretty volatile. I think we took more trades this morning than we have in a long time. Look at 27. I don't think we've taken. That's more than we've taken in a single morning session so far this year. I think if we go back even further, you'll see it's been months since we've taken 27 trades in a morning session. But all we need is the volatility. I'm still looking for another 27 or up. And what month are we into now? I think we're, we're all the way back to um, August of last year. I don't know. It's been a long time. We'll just say that. We don't have to go through everything. Um, but, okay, so I went too far. There we go. Oh, not quite yet. No, here we go. This is this month. All right, if you're gonna read the spreadsheet, you can read all the CFTC risk disclosures down at the bottom. Today, as I said, is the 27th day of January, 2021. Today, we made 18 ticks on crude, 52 ticks on gold, and 42 ticks on the yes. Put us up $1,275 a contract on the morning session. Um, today, it took eight minutes and three trades to get to my goal for the day. At that point, we're up $150 a contract, and we took a total of 27 trades this morning. So on the month now, we're up $10,915. That's over 17 trading days averaging $642 per contract per two hour trading day. I've now gone 230 consecutive days of getting my goal and 17 consecutive days so far this year. Now that's because we've only had 17 days so far this year. So on the year now we're at $10,915 a contract and that's averaging $642 per contract per two hour trading day. All right, so let's get into what we did and didn't do. Um, let me scroll and let me back that up a little so we cover a little more landscape all at once here come on there it goes okay so here we go this is where we started out this morning now we missed the first trade here on gold um but we did pick up 
the second trade. And I'm pretty sure we got a break even on that second trade. Um, then I was following the slingshot to see what we were going to get. And we had a break even here. Then right here, um, we got plus six. Then we had another break even. Then we had this move right here. Now, this all happened in like a couple seconds. This, this, and this happened in just a few seconds. Um, but then we had some more opportunities. So we had six from that first one, 11 from this one to put us at plus 17, two from that one to put us at plus 19, 10 from this one to put us at plus 29, um, 15 from this one to put us at plus 34, Thirteen from this one to put us at plus forty-seven, and a break-even five here to put us at plus fifty-two, and another break-even, and that was our morning session. Now during the break, it got a little choppy right here, right before the break, and during the break, it looks like there was nothing, <laughs> nothing you could do during the break. It's starting to set one up right now. But there wasn't much going on there during the break. Now, today we had crude inventories out, and I'll give you the numbers for the week. Um, on crude, the number for the week is 52.72, and on the ES, it's 38.48. Now, that's a big difference on the ES. So if you're looking at options on the ES, look for options that are nearby. And 38.48, if it gets back up there, now, it's not going to have any reason to get back up there, I don't think. I don't think anything good's going to happen here. But we do have the FOMC coming out tomorrow. And Valerie was right. I do have my timing set wrong on that page. I have to fix that. But anyway, on the ES, oh, this is not the ES, this is crude. Okay, on crude, our first trade was right in here. We picked up four ticks on that one. Then it started moving up right here. And I didn't get into any of this, but there was a long trade right here. And one more right there. And I missed all that. But that was because it was coming into the crude inventories. So I stayed out of it. And that was because of the crude inventories. Um, our next trade was right in here. We picked up nine ticks on that one. And over here, we picked up another six ticks to put us at plus 18. Okay, we missed that short right there, and then we get into the break. And it was a bounce off the BBC right here. That would have been nice, profitable. And that was pretty much it during the break. Okay, now the ES. We had a lot of activity on the ES today because... Well, it was just a little bit wild. It was fun though. Um, let's let me back it out a little bit so we can cover a little more real estate at once. Come on, charts. There they go. Okay. So this was our first trade on the ES, ended up being a break-even trade. Then this one right here is where we got our goal. We picked up eight ticks on that. Then on um, this one, um, that was a break-even trade, it looks like. Um, I should have gotten something out of it, but I don't think I did. Um, hang on. Hang on just a second. Uh, this is where we got more than our goal. We got 12 ticks on that one. And I did get something out of this. I got two ticks out of that. Sorry, I was looking at the wrong one. So we got 12 ticks out of this first one. We're going to break even there, then plus 12, then plus 2 to put us at plus 14 total. Then on this one, we picked up 16 ticks to put us at plus 30. Uh, we missed the long right there. It would have been a break even. We missed the short right there. It would have given us a little profit. Now, in this leg down, um, there was really nothing you could do in there. Now, it depends what trade setups you're doing, but um, there really wasn't much you could do in here. Okay. Um, you know, if you're doing like 128s or inverted 137s or anything like that, you know, there was some opportunity. But nevertheless, our next trade was right over here, and it looks like we picked up four ticks on that to put us at plus 34. And we missed a couple in there. Uh, we had a break even right there, it looks like. And we missed one there, we missed one there, we had a break even there, another break even there. Another break even there. We picked up four ticks there to put us at plus 38. Uh, break even there. A break even there. We had a lot of break evens on the ES this morning. Looks like. And on this one, we picked up eight ticks to put us at plus 46. 
we missed a short here. And it looks like that's all we had for the morning session. Now, there was one at the end of at the end of the day that was right in here that I was doing the spreadsheet at the time, so I didn't take credit for this one. Well, and it would have stopped out if you did do it. Um, if you didn't move your stop to break even here, it would have stopped you out. But then it did get up to where I thought it was going to get almost. I said 88.75, it got up to 88.50. Um, during the break, this is last week's weekly trading zone you see here. Uh, but during the break, there was a shorting opportunity right there. That leg down. Oops. Crude oil. And not really anything in there, there, or there, or there. Uh, there had to have been something in here. All this mess. Um, there was a shorting opportunity there. Another one there. Another one there. Another one there. And then we just flip all the way over here. And there was a long opportunity there. Long opportunity there. A long opportunity there into the zone. Last week's zone. And that was it. So the ES was giving up a lot of opportunity today. Lots of opportunity today. Okay. Hey, David. David G. I won't say your last name. Um, does anybody have any questions about anything at this level? I mean, at this time, before I pass stuff back out to Fabulous Phoenix, Arizona, Studio A. Um, looking over America's largest city park. Um, I guess, Dwayne, if you're ready, you can take stuff over. Um, and David G is in here. Yep. So. Yeah, no, I'll open right. mic at the top of the hour. Hope you don't okay. recap with the recap. Uh, today it took eight minutes and three trades to get to the goal for the day. At that point, we're up $150 a contract. Hey, wait, I didn't go through the spreadsheet again. I can do that one more time. All right. Uh, All right. So. You're going to have to take the screen back. Well, I can just talk about it. Okay. So on the day, today was the 27th day of January 2021. We made 18 ticks in crude, 52 ticks in gold, and 46 on the ES. Put us up 12.75 on the morning session. On the month now, we're up $10,915 per contract. That's over 17 trading days, averaging $642 per contract per two hour trading day. We have now gone 230 consecutive days of getting our goal. And so far in the year, 17 consecutive days. And that's pretty much it. That was our day today. <laughs> All right, guys, uh, Logic 247, here's where we stand for the week. Logic 247, that's our around the clock e-mini alert service, opens Sunday night, 6 p.m. Eastern. That's when the Globex market opens. Remains open around the clock until Friday afternoon at 5 p.m. Eastern. Since Sunday night at the open, we have issued a total of 41 alerts. And nine never triggered. Still waiting on the results of one. We've had 31 actionable alerts. Five were stopped out. That's 16% of the actionable alerts. That's not typical. A typical week is 20%. The risk profile for the alerts, both the logic and concierge, we don't want to risk more than $300 per contract per trade, less when possible, based on market structure and a very simple three-step methodology that I teach all of our traders. Now, the individual alerts look a little something like this. Alerts can come out at 2 a.m. or 2 p.m. It's whenever opportunity presents itself. If you don't want to be uh, up all night trading, then you just turn notifications off in Telegram until you wake up the next morning and you're ready to start trading. You turn notifications back on. Any alerts that were issued while you were sleeping, the good news is if they triggered, there's a high probability that they're going to trigger again. Most of our alerts, once triggered, will trigger multiple times. In fact, there's a higher probability of it triggering again than not once triggered the first time. So the way you read the alert, uh, this is an example, the last one that came out. This is the NQ, alert number 6,314. Cell 13,303. Initial target 13,293. Second target, or PS, stands for potential support. So on a short, the additional targets will say P 
PS potential support. So there's an initial target, second, third, fourth, the fifth and final target. On a short, it's always the weekly trading zone below. On a long, it's the weekly trading zone above. The number you see in parentheses, that's where the market was at the time Valerie came through and did the recap. The move may have extended beyond that, but it's just a snapshot in time. When she came through to do the recap, this is where price was. This is where the move was at the time of the recap. Uh, let's see. Here's the S&P. It's a short. S&P short. It's crude oil. That's a long. V is buy. 52.90. The target overhead is a weekly trading zone. So this wasn't a, a big move. We're, we're anticipating a big move here because we have a weekly trading zone overhead. And when we approach a weekly zone from below, we expect that to be good resistance. So those are the ones that we're still waiting on. There's the Dow. Stop out on the S&P. Short on the Russell. One, two, three, four, five targets. When you see the Z's, that's no trigger. The red X means it got stopped out. No trigger. Here's silver. Gold. NQ. Russell. No trigger. Russell, you're asking, is this for NT8? No, it's for uh, DT Pro. Hang on, let me, I don't know if you're tuned in right now, Russell, but you should be. When you ask for my layout, I assumed you were using DT Pro. Okay, so back to where we were. Okay, we got a series of these here that did not trigger. Now, here's the thing. Had we not marked these no trigger, they would have triggered. But at, we have to draw the line at some point and just say, okay, we're not going to wait any longer on these because we know that we had a huge sell-off today, which we'll go to the chart in a second and take a look at that. In Q, Russell, Russell. Now, when you see hedge, like right here, the market was at a point. It could go either way. And as futures traders, we don't care which way it goes, up or down, doesn't matter. There's no uh, rules against shorting the market. There's no uptick rule. No, no, you don't have to worry about any of that stuff. So in the same session, even in the same hour, if that's what the chart dictates, you can be short, you can be long. And in both cases, we had two-sided action. We got filled on both. S&P. Silver, NQ, Russell, no trigger on the Dow, S&P, Russell. Now we're up to Sunday night, so everything I'm scrolling up now, this all happened Sunday night. Now most traders are waiting for Monday morning for Wall Street to open, 9.30 a.m. Eastern. We go to work Sunday night, 6 p.m. So this and this and this, all of these happened Sunday night and we are in week 130 of logic 247 last week week 129 we had 48 total alerts eight never triggered we had 40 actionable we had a holiday last Monday and we ended up with four getting stopped out based on not risking more than $300 per contract per trade less than possible now, I say this every day, and, it, and, and this question comes up every time I go into a one-on-one -on -one mentoring session. Okay, so on the alert, we risk $300. No. We don't want to risk more than $300, less when possible, based on market structure and a very simple three-step methodology that I teach all of our traders in the one-on-one -on -one mentoring sessions. Okay, so it's not, now in the live training room, there's an eight tick risk on every trade. It doesn't matter what market. Michael's simply trying to teach you the trade setup. We use a fast time frame in the live training room so that he can show you as many possible trade setups and executions that he can in the two hour period that we have to work with. The alerts are based on a 30 minute chart. 
not a range chart, a 30 minute chart. And the maximum we want to risk is $300 less when possible. There's no reason to risk $300 if the chart tells you you only need to risk 150. Now, I know a lot of strategies and methodologies use a fixed number or a percentage of the ATR or any other number of clever ways to do it. We prefer to just query the chart and based on the structure of that particular market at that moment in time, at the moment of impact when we trigger, the chart tells you exactly where you need to put the stop. Okay, It's a simple three-step method and I teach that to all of our traders. Last week we only had 10% stop out which is not typical. Again, the average is 20%. So let's go back to that daily chart we were looking at. There we go. All right. Remember, top of the hour, David Grant of The Golden Journey will be joining us. And again, if you're listening to this broadcast via Apple iTunes, Spotify, iHeartRadio, any of the major podcasting platforms, if you want to see the charts, Hit pause on your podcast player and go to youtube.com slash CFRN where you'll be able to see the charts for this broadcast and over 1,600 other daily shows. All right, so the green line, we call that the BBC. It just stands for Bull Bear Cross. And I'll back up here and show you. When price gets above that green line, when price crosses above it, we're bullish, we anticipate higher prices. When price crosses below it, we're bearish, we anticipate lower prices. This is true on the daily chart. It's also true on an hourly chart or a 30 minute chart or a five minute chart. A range chart doesn't matter, volume chart. Prices above the BBC, we anticipate higher prices. If it's below, we anticipate lower prices. The other indicator you see, technical term, is CFMA1. I call it going climbing, red and falling. Bullish, bearish. Support, resistance. It's true on a daily, true on an hourly, a 30 minute, a five minute, a one minute, you name it. Everything's the same. Everything we talk about, everything we teach, everything we do is fluid across all markets, all time frames. People will tell you, well, you, you know, you can't trade gold the same way you trade the S&P, as an example. And the reason they'll give you is because they have different personalities. Okay, well, we're not looking for a relationship. We're just looking for a high probability, low risk trade opportunity. And in auction style markets, which is what these are, buyers on the bid, sellers on the ask, price channeling back and forth. We're simply looking for a window of opportunity as price moves from support to resistance, back to support, back to resistance. That relationship has been ongoing since the inception of the markets. The last time that we closed below the BBC, November 3rd, I've been talking about this for weeks, now we were this was part of the pandemic low had sort of a double bottom here slightly higher low here as you can see okay and so on november the 3rd we closed below the bbc november the 4th we closed above it we've not closed below the bbc since november 3rd we've spiked it a few times like here, big red day, big red candle, buyers come in and run it back up before the close of the session. So we spike it here and here and here and here. And the most recent move down, right here, we had a new all-time historic intraday and closing high on January the 8th when price could go no higher high of this session was 38.24 half. Nobody was willing to pay 38.24.75. If they were, it would have ticked higher. But the collective consciousness said no. And so price came back to blue and climbing support, caught a bounce, put in a lower high, 
which sent us back to the BBC, which held as support. The pullback holds more often than it doesn't. It held here and here, 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 and here. Now this is true on an hourly, on a 30 minute, on a five minute, on a one minute. The smaller the time frame, the less reliable it becomes. The larger the time frame, the more important the move is. So yesterday we had a daily doji talked about that on the show, talked about it in the discussion group last night. If you're on the trial and you're not plugged into the Telegram discussion group, you're missing a lot. Okay, so get plugged in, see Valerie. Last night I posted a chart right after the open. Let me go find it. meet some of the nicest people you're ever going to meet in the world of trading right here here it is okay this was shortly after the globex opened last night looks like nine minutes after no that's 609 my time so that would have been 809 eastern 34 3840 to yesterday's low is 20 plus points if yesterday's low is broken then there's another 20 plus points to the daily BBC. And you can see down here the daily BBC at 37.93. If I drew a line in the sand, anything above this, you're looking for long trades, and anything below, you're starting to look for short trades on your smaller time frame. And so this was the this today is Wednesday, so this was Tuesday's candle. Or I'm sorry, this is Wednesday's candle. This was Tuesday. This was Sunday, Monday. So my comments were that if we take out, if we get below this line, we go to support here. If this support gets broken, then we go to here. And what happened there's that line we came down there was yesterday's low we took that out and then that window of opportunity that I had drawn right here you can see we cruised right through that and then the previous day's support this big red candle, that's today, Wednesday, Tuesday, Sunday, Monday. Okay. We then took out the low, and we talked about this on yesterday's show. If you missed it, you should watch it. We went into a lot of detail on this before it happened. Unlike a lot of the training organizations out there who love to talk about things after the fact, we enjoy talking about them before the fact. That's one of the things that makes us a little bit different. Now, not that we know what's going to happen next, because we don't. And I know that most trading organizations try to convince you that their strategy and methodology allows them to know with certainty what's going to happen next, but that's not possible. It defies the laws of physics, science, and God. When God created Adam, he didn't give him the ability to change the past or know the future. And those two things are inextricably linked for eternity. So we just tell you the truth. We don't know what's going to happen next. But using our methodology and our strategy along with our indicators, we know with certainty what the next high probability move is. Just like last night. Price gets below this line I drew. All of our traders know that blue and climbing has the potential to be support. Once that's taken out, then we have that low. Once that support's taken out, we have that low. And when we get to the BBC, that should be good support. Again, it held here and here and here and here and here and here and here. And here. It's a daily chart. But you'll see the same behavior on a 30-minute chart, which we'll go to in just a minute. The big question now, <coughs> do we close this session, the Wednesday session, below the daily BBC or above it? If we close above it, as we did here, 
then we'll most likely have a, another leg to the upside. If we close below it, like we did way back here on October 26th, see how on this move down it held it held it held here it spiked it but it held the issue was you had red and falling overhead and that's bearish right and so on this day October the 26th we had a red candle close below the BBC we've not had that dynamic happen since October 26th where price crossed below and held and you can see once it held once we closed at 3387 we went on to put in a low down at 32 16 and a quarter and so we have that same dynamic in place today where do we close we've done exactly what we talked about yesterday and last night and on previous days made the trip back to the BBC price always reverts to the mean in our case the mean just happens to be green we call it the BBC price always reverts to the mean if this holds then we'll be looking for a leg to the upside which will take us to blue and climbing which by the time we get there will most likely be directly over price in that case it can become resistance and if it becomes resistance, then we'll catch another leg back down to the BBC. If we close below the BBC today, which again, that hasn't happened since last October, if we close below the BBC today, then we look for support here at the 50% Fibonacci price extension, which I won't even go into all the details of what that is and why it's there and why it's important. If you've been following the show on a daily basis, then you know the importance of this number. Maybe I'll go into some detail tomorrow uh, or Friday uh, when we don't have a guest coming on because we have uh, Dr. Tom coming on tomorrow. So if we close below the BBC, we'll look for a move down, obviously to the low of this session, and then this 50% Fibonacci price extension and the low here at 37.40. The 24% Fibonacci price retracement on the daily chart from the most recent low to the current high, current intraday high put in yesterday, the 26th, 24% Fib is right here at 37.09. Just below that is the 38% Fibonacci price extension. So this is a very important area. If we close below the BBC, watch for a move to 37.50. We'll just round that number. Look for a move to 37.50. And if 37.50 doesn't hold as support, then look for a continued move down to 37.09, basically 3,700. So that's about 80 points from where we are right now. But it all hinges on where we close today. Now, along with the logic alerts, we have a different type of alert. I'm going to show you those. It's called the concierge trade alerts. These are different in that they, number one, don't come out around the clock. This is published as a static report each evening shortly after the Globex open. So 6.25 p.m. Eastern is what it was posted last night. There's two numbers for each market. This is for guidance for the entire session. My recommendation is that when this report is published, you put two lines in the sand for the market you trade. And because the S&P is the bellwether, if, even if you don't trade the S&P, let's say maybe you like to trade the Russell or the Dow or the NQ. Understanding what's happening with the S&P will help you trade those other indices. So you draw a line at 38.55, if price starts moving towards 38.55, you know you want to be on the long side of the market. And as price drops to 38.19, that's a signal to be on the 
short side of the market. Let's go to a 30 minute chart. If you want to grab a screenshot, let me pull it up. There you go. You want a screenshot? Click it. And we'll walk through the numbers. Okay, 30 minute SP. trend line that we had used on the 30 minute chart to connect this day or this candle to this swing high to this swing high if I just extend that out Thanks, Valor. Okay. So I just extended the trend line that was already in place. And so price. Try to get through there. Try, try, and try. Which brings us to where we are now. We've got one weekly trading zone left below. 3741 slash 3742. We've been consolidating here for a while at the 3788. Now last night's CTA. Let me go back to that. On the S&P was to be long 38.55, but we never saw 38.55 last night. But having that line in the sand keeps you in tune where you are in the grand scheme of things. The short side for the S&P was 38.19. The market began to sell off. Started this morning at 6.30 a.m. Eastern in earnest. And we had to take out these lows right here. So we trigger 38.19. The initial target, or the trade to target, is at 38.13 slash 14, which is a weekly trading. So if you just traded at 100 bucks, 10 contracts is 2,500 bucks. Worst thing you could possibly do is try to trade above your weight class. I mean, don't come in and go live right away. We have a whole process that if you adhere to, it will increase your chance of being consistent in the markets. We want you to put together 10 consecutive days in a row in your demo account, in the simulator, before you even think about going live. Once you go live, you only go live with one contract. Your goal then is to increase your account balance by $2,000. Once you accomplish that, our blueprint will give you the green light to add a second contract using the profit you earned trading one contract. And when it's time, the blueprint will give you the green light to add contract number three with profit you earned trading two contracts. And that process just keeps repeating itself. You never increase trade size by more than one contract at a time. And you only add additional contracts for profit you earn in the market. If you follow that, if you adhere to that, the days of blowing up accounts left and right will be a thing of the past. I'm not going to say you could never blow up an account with us. What I am saying is if you adhere to the rules set forth in the blueprint, you'll have to break a whole lot of rules. You'll have to go heavily against the grain to blow up an account. Because if you have two consecutive days in a row where you don't meet your goal, the blueprint's going to put you back in sim. And you're going to book a one-on-one -on -one mentoring session. And either you and I or you and Michael will get together. We'll go over the trades. We'll try to help you figure out what happened. Maybe there's something you didn't quite understand about the strategy. Or maybe you were trying to trade a market that was not suitable for trading at the time you were placing those trades, and we'll help you figure that out. Once you regain your confidence, then you go right back where you left off in the live account.
Thanks, Han. We appreciate the feedback. Okay. All right. Um, from here, looking for price to move up to the BBC, which we expect to be good resistance. And that will give us another leg to the downside. Price may stall out here at the zone, 3788 slash 89. If that's the case, if price can't overcome the resistance at the zone, then we'll get our leg to the downside right here. Okay, that's the story on the Dow. Let's go to, or that's the story on the S&P. Let's go to the Dow. And here's the Dow. Okay, last night, we, were not, we didn't see any triggers on the indices on the long side. The short side on the Dow was 38.15. 30,815, which is up here. S&P pays $50 a point. Dow pays $5 a point. On any given day, if the S&P finishes 10 points up on the day, you can expect the Dow to be up 100 points. If the Dow is down 100 points, you can expect the S&P to be down 10. So the initial trade to target was here at 30,775 slash 780. It's about 35 Dow points. And then we consolidate it. Only three things happen at a weekly trading zone. The most likely thing is consolidation. That's what you see right here. And right here. Second most likely thing is rejection. And the third and least likely is the slice is what you see here. <coughs> so we've dropped 500 points in the Dow at $5 a point. It's $2,500 per contract traded. So let's jump to the Russell and we'll bring David on here in about five minutes. Okay, on the Russell short 2111. dropped to the next weekly trading zone at 2095 slash 96. We consolidated for one, two, three hours. Buyers came in, took us up to the BBC. We got above the BBC. Price pulled back to the BBC from above. And just as we expect it to be good resistance as we pull up, as it was here, 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 we got on the other side. Now we pull back from above, we expect it to be good support. While the pullback to the BBC holds more often than it doesn't, it has to not hold sometime, or we'd end up with a flat sideways market that's basically untradeable. And that's where a lot of traders end up in trouble trying to trade those flat sideways markets. Our indicators do a great job of not only helping you to find the high probability, low risk opportunities, they will keep you out of a flat, stagnant market once you learn how to read them. Okay, so let's peek at the NQ. CTA last night on the NQ was to be short. 13,493, which is right 
here. Thousand four hundred ninety-three. So we drop to the zone. That's the initial trade two target. Go from four sixty-four to four ninety-four. It's thirty NQ points at twenty dollars a point, six hundred dollars per contract traded. Caught a little bounce here at the zone. Drop to the next zone where the market finds support. Will we bounce to red and falling? When we just as when we move up to the BBC, we expect to find resistance. We expect to find resistance at red and falling. And red and falling took us down to the low of the session. Thirteen thousand one hundred and seventy. What you're looking at right there is a $6,000 per contract move. If you stayed in it all the way down. Interesting how traders have a difficult time coming out of a losing trade, but a profitable trade, they find it difficult to stay in. Just want to book the profit and get out. And there's nothing wrong with that. In fact, that's the very method we teach you in the live training room. Get your goal for the day and go do life. But there's something that always bugs you because you look back after the fact and you go, man, I was in this trade. Why didn't I just stay in the trade? If you want to stay in the trade longer, you can wait for the exit signal. Price came down, it hit the zone, which is a great place to take profit. Bounced up to red and falling, took that trip down. Now this little black line, it's called the step line. You see it's on the left side of red and falling. When a move starts to run out of steam, the step line is going to move from the left side to the right side. When that happens on a short trade, you're looking for the first green candle that closes above the step line right there. And that's your exit signal. And that price was 11,364. I'm sorry, 13,364. The exit signal will not get you out of the swing higher, swing low because nobody knows it's a swing higher, swing low till after the fact. Okay, so the NQ moving up, potential resistance here at the weekly zone, just as it was support here, resistance here. If it can poke above it, then the BBC. Okay, it is top of the hour. So let me get David's mic open. And if you weren't here at the beginning of the broadcast, we're going to talk today about the value of connecting people through crypto. Your golden journey is about more than just generating wealth by adopting new technology. It's also about changing the standard of living for the least of these. So with that, David, let me get your mic open. There you are. Okay, I've opened your mic on my side, and there you are. David, welcome to the show. Thank you, Dwayne. It's, uh, I was really enjoying uh, how you're expressing yourself in the trading as well. Uh, well, so good, uh, good time. afternoon and, uh, just beautiful, beautiful. What I'm hearing. I just love it. <laughs> and you know, the beautiful thing is as, uh, our G99 becomes more active, uh, of course there, you're always going to want to have, I, this is my opinion, a buy and hold position in this as it becomes more active. Uh, there's no reason that it can't be traded intraday interest and, and crypto never sleeps. That market trades around the clock, 24-7, 365. Futures, unlike stocks, futures trade around the clock, but they do pause Friday afternoon at 5 p.m. Eastern, and the markets are dark until Sunday night at 6 p.m. Eastern, and then it starts all over again. But crypto never sleeps. There are no exchange hours. It's always there, always moving. So it's good to have you back with us, David. Uh, for those of you who may not know who David is, uh, he 
comes and speaks on behalf of a group called The Golden Journey. He's been with us two or either three. How many, how many shows have you been on the last two Wednesdays? Uh, or I three? think the last, yeah, the last two I've been on. Okay, and so if you missed the previous shows, just go to youtube.com slash CFRN. Scroll back to last Wednesday and the Wednesday before. And we start at the second hour, just as we're doing today. So, David, tell us what's happened in your life in the world of G99, the golden journey since we last spoke, and then we'll get into uh, today's topic. Well, we have lots of uh, fun stuff that's, uh, like, the project is going so well. It's uh, We started with uh, uh, a new registration, a uh, new, uh, new, new play called GS Partners that's connected to the G99, and that launched as of December 1, and G99 went live. Uh, right at that same timeline in that uh, December the 15th. And so that it is now finding its foothold out there. It's finding its space. It started uh, literally at around two cents, but it's, you know, it's retraced and, you know, it has to build up some steam and get some uh, uh, things going on with it and that. But we have seen a beautiful rollout and developments on that way. Uh, next week, we get to uh, get our, uh, within our system, we're also getting a way to uh, make it fungible. And, uh, you know, that means just the utility, get to use it through uh, a debit uh, crypto uh, card that's coming up next week. Uh, and uh, whether you're in our system or not, you would have, uh, that's an invitation to come and get that because that is a, a, looks like a really good one. But I'm, you know, I'm very happy with that. So that's the latest development very very exciting for us and that because the question often in the world of crypto gold silver how do i spend it how do i use it and that's a big one that's a number one question um you know knowing full well we want actually people to um actually do a lot of more hodling with it than uh, uh spending it because it's in a value it's a value asset that's going up right now so um, it's, there's a tension there. <laughs> Do you cash it out or not? But that's all part of what we want people to grow in and learn about in a very, very simple and safe landing place to come and see what this thing is about. Now, uh, you wanted to talk today about connecting people through crypto. Mm -hmm. Tell us more about that. And I think you've got some, uh, some screens, some slides you want to share. Absolutely, in that. Let so me, let's uh, uh, look at the and so, Okay, and uh, so is that coming up okay for us? Uh, I'm not sure. Did I do that right? Hang okay. on, I, I, hang on one second. Make presenter. Okay. Yes. Okay. Now you should have the pop up. There we go. Hey, hey I How's got that it. working yep. up. Yep. There we go. Okay. I see your. I see your screen. Right, and uh, so uh, as Dwayne said, we're the uh, uh, the golden journey. We have a uh, we're literally using money to connect people, people to connect through money. Um, and uh, I've read some fascinating books, and I might highlight that book a little bit later on in our discussion of uh, just a beautiful history of money. And it's the uh, a little uh, the story of a made up thing because money is what uh, whatever we choose it to be, if you will, and uh, whether it's a trading a goat for a sheep or, uh, you know, in modern day, uh, various ways of us expressing money. But what we, what isn't out there and what I'm so excited about, Dwayne, what isn't out there is the human energy of connections. And that's where we want to tie it in because uh, I think we've done um, kind of a disservice to uh, how we think about money because money has always been that thing on the, you know, just the peripheral, it's a necessary evil almost. Sometimes we have a feel for it and that it's not meant to be thought, seen that way. It should connect us well, but we also know it's been weaponized in a really damaging way in our, in our world. So we have this, I've got to get it, I need it. And at the same time, it has, um, I'm a boomer. So, uh, and I'm talking to a lot of boomers and yes, I would say more than, more than 50% of the population, you know, boomers are um, quite silent about where their finances are, but uh, more than 50% are in very stressful situations. And uh, a lot of shame out there on money. And we want to create a safe space for people to be able to talk openly without the fear. We're looking at a slide here um, uh, for those that are just listening in and that, and it's a 
uh, a slide of a World War II fighter plane uh, with all kinds of bullet holes in it. And uh, they were discussing uh, how to, you know, keep the pilots safe and keep things going uh, the way they were wanting to and that. And they saw all the bullet holes and said, oh, we better shore up the uh, planes where all those bullet holes are hitting. And uh, there was a mathematician, Abraham Wald, who looked at that data, and I'll, I'll tie this in in a sec for uh, how, how, how to really reinterpret numbers, if you will. Mm -hmm. And he said, well, those are the planes that got back. What happened to the planes that didn't make it back? And they rethought the same data and said, oh, we have to shore up the places where the bullet holes aren't, because those are the ones that went through and brought the plane down. And that's that simple way of saying, taking the same information, the same data and reapplying it and saying, ah, okay. Cause sometimes we make first assumptions and they're not always the right assumptions until somebody says, hey, just give it a tweak, give it a, a second look. That's what we're doing with our golden journey when we talk about 1022 and I'll explain that in a bit as well. But uh, we're really saying we can do different ways of connecting people. And this is uh, part of what we're doing is uh, in a networking system, MLM uh, originally, and probably the big gun out there that everybody's aware of would be an, an Amway that started the ball rolling. And, uh, but we also know there's a lot of discomfort in that, uh, in that uh, business model. Well, it's gotten uh, a, so, a bad rap and, and, you know, perhaps for a reason. Mm -hmm. So we're, so we're not the ones who are in our group uh, and in our strategy. So we are a micro part of a bigger group out there that would be more traditional, if you will. And we're saying, no, we're going to relook at the numbers. We're going to think about them differently and saying what, you know, and we're really using a different model altogether. And um, uh, this is how money has typically been uh, used in people's lives, more like a silo. Mm -hmm. And uh, mm -hmm. for again, our radio audience, we're looking at just a traditional silo out in the middle of a farmland USA, probably somewhere. And that I think that's how people have treated money. Everyone man for himself figuring it out and right. you're in a beautiful show with what you're doing and saying we don't have to figure it out by ourselves we can work together we can come alongside if you have a, an account that got blown come and talk to us right come and be part of our group <laughs> our team our village i like using the word village because i think it's a really really powerful understanding because not everybody in a village has to have the same skills as each other they just have to know somebody with skills in the village to uh, to prosper and value and you need a uh, and do this. Smith, you need a, a cobbler, uh, you need a baker, mm -hmm. you need a candlestick maker. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly, exactly. And that, and I I, I think uh, we've been well trained, sadly, through our maybe our educational model, to kind of live in isolation over money. And even um, you know, you can go into a lot of uh, businesses, and they'd say teamwork it makes the dream work, and, and those kinds of things. But usually, the teamwork that they're talking about is making the dream work for the owner, and everybody right. else just get, gets paid a, a kind of a, maybe a, you know a living wage, right? But not a sustain, not one where they could walk away independently on their own with their finances. They're kind of uh, it's kind of a golden chain that they're attached to. And uh, we're wanting to free people up on their finances so they're actually doing what they want to do. And uh, But I'm th I think of it more in this particular slide where we're looking at uh, uh, a slide maybe from an Amish community back in the day where they're raising a barn. You know, the, the, the old, like these are not just one-off stories. These are, were a way of living. And uh, somebody's house burns down or barn burns down or they're starting a new one that barn represent, re represented economic wealth for that farm. It was a way of doing things that could keep everything safe and secure and all proper in that. Could you imagine trying to build a barn by yourself? Imagine trying to do it even with one other person in that. And they said, no, 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 no. We are all going to cre contribute our time, our energy, our effort over maybe a weekend, get her done, so that our community is strong. And they always knew, hey, if something goes wrong, I'm gonna go help you know, neighbor, my neighbor down the road with that, knowing that if a crisis came, somebody's gonna come back to them and help them along. 
And that's what we're talking about in our community and the way we talk about it. And not everybody has to be a superstar. Uh, I don't even like to, I'm going to use the word recruiter, but I don't like the word recruiter because I think it's, uh, that's more of a sales thing going on. Right. I like right. the one where we're actually working together, sponsoring, uh, sharing our lives and not requiring everybody to become a mini me or a duplicate of anybody else but everyone should still have a real chance of connecting. So that's what we're able to do. And the beautiful thing we have going on here is that the tools that we have, we don't have a saw and a hammer and all of those kinds of things. We have a simple tool called um, our G999, and we also are attached to mom and, mom, mom and dad uh, being, uh, you know, the grandpa of all of this or the straight, uh, you know, is uh, Bitcoin that really paved the way about 10 years ago. And then Ethereum has come along a few years later, and we're attached to those as well in our in our uh, very very powerful uh, banking system that we have now in place. So it's 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 a delight to be part of that because we're not giving an either or option of how to use a set of tools that everyone can benefit from. Everyone, so here we are. Everyone can build their own dream, however they see it because yeah. the opportunity uh, it's really a, a level playing field now, of course you've got to you know do your research do your due diligence know what know what you're doing and what you're doing it with uh, not every cryptocurrency out there is going to build value uh, but some will and it all has to do with the use case talk to us about some of the really use cases here well, we're going to be able to do um, so many ways of uh, getting this out for people in that. And our usages are going to increase um, probably on almost a monthly basis because we're really talking even beyond cryptocurrencies. We're really talking the world of blockchain and all the development that could happen about sending secure data around the world, anywhere in the world. Uh, and the beautiful thing about that is it is uh, borderless and it is peer to peer, meaning uh, whatever your data I have, say I had sensitive information in my hand and I wanted to get it to my friend in my living room, I just hand it over to him, right? And then he has it and good, that's sending a $10 bill in, the, in an envelope to somebody. And that's what cryptocurrency and the blockchain, uh, different various uh, ways of uh, sending data around is going to allow us to do. It's gonna free up people to have true security, but really more like, uh, two friends in, a, in, in right in the same room sharing it uh, with each other and just passing it on and that. So uh, that's a huge part of it. And I know that's a growing part of it. And that's what we're also including in this is an educational model with a very, very soft landing coming in very calm, cool, collected, uh, no big, you know, uh, the word investment is not the language uh, I would choose to use on this. I would tend to use it as come in to learn about this, get educated on this, get savvy. Like we have so many people thinking they're ready to be investors and they're not really heart wise they're, and mind wise, they're not ready to be investors. They're more still in that kind of, um, you know, what can I get paid on Friday kind of consumer mindset and that we need to uh, uh, give people another way of approaching this. Cause when I do believe when people hear uh, the word cryptocurrency, the only language they understand right now is investment. And uh, what do you think about that, uh, Dwayne? Uh, from an, do you mean as opposed to a trading vehicle? Or do you mean as a means of commerce, uh, as a way? Yeah, well, as a means of commerce. Exactly. I, I posted, uh, I'm looking for it right now. Let's see if I can find it. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, most of you in the audience, financially savvy as you are, have probably heard of Davos. That's the big economic summit that's held every year. And I posted this, uh, I think it was on Sunday. That's when the news came out. The World Economic Forum's upcoming Davos agenda will feature two separate sessions on cryptocurrency offering another compelling sign that digital assets have permeated mainstream consciousness. Uh, the sessions titled Resetting Digital Currencies will be held on Monday and Thursday. Uh, the first session will feature five public speakers, including the Bank of England, Governor Andrew Bailey, 
And this is the one I found interesting. The president and CEO of Western Union, Heikmet Ersik, which I probably didn't pronounce that right, but everybody knows Western Union. The amount of money that is sent from the United States to Mexico every year, and I published, I posted, let me see if I posted that dollar amount. Mm, I didn't. Let me pull it up real quick. U.S. remittances to Mexico 2020. Pull that number up. Mexicans in, this is from the Wall Street Journal, Mexicans in the U.S. sent record remittances despite COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, remittances rose 11% to $36.9 billion in the first 11 months of 2020, more than the record $36.4 billion sent in 2019, according to figures released by this week by Mexico's central bank. The average remittance was 4.3% higher at $340, the bank said. So anyone who's ever sent money through Western Union, uh, I don't know what the going rate is today, but it used to be if you wanted to send a hundred dollars, I think it cost you at least ten dollars to send that hundred bucks. Would you say that's about right? That sounds uh, yeah. yeah I haven't used them in a long and... time, and so Western Union and MoneyGram are the most popular ways of sending money to someone in a foreign country. Now, the CEO of Western Union is showing up at this Davos Economic Summit because Western Union's in big trouble. Uh, that slice of the pie that. $36.9 billion that was sent in just 11 months last year. Western Union and MoneyGram both, they get a significant slice of their annual income, annual revenue is, is from that very dynamic I just explained. You know, somebody comes to the United States, they're sending money back to Mexico to help support their family because here they can get a job, they can earn a living wage. They can earn a wage here, not only to live, but to support their family back home. And Western Union sees this revenue stream about to take wings and fly out the window. Because if I have a digital wallet with Bitcoin in it, and you're in Mexico and you have a digital wallet, I can send money to your wallet and I don't need any third party. I don't need Western Union. I don't need MoneyGram. All I need is the address of your wallet. And like that, I send you whatever it is. I would normally go down to Walmart and stand in line at the MoneyGram window. I don't have to do that anymore. And this is another step towards mass adoption. And, you know, it's no wonder that the folks who run Western Union and MoneyGram are concerned. How are they going to get a piece of this pie? So back to you. It is, and we are truly disruptive technology. Hey, and when you uh, rock the boat, uh, yeah, there's a lot of questions. And those who have a vested interest in things not going, progressing forward and moving forward in that, uh, yeah, they're going to have their claws open because it is disruptive and they're trying to find their space. Uh, remember back in the day, Blockbuster thought, oh, what's that silly Netflix thing? Uh, and uh, we know the, the end of that story very well. Uh, There's actually one, that. one uh, blockbuster still open uh, somewhere in Oregon. Uh, I don't know if they have any ties <laughs> to the corporate chain anymore uh, because the whole thing kind of went away. But I was just talking at the beginning of the show today. Uh, there's a stock being run up right now called GameStop. And I liken GameStop to Blockbuster in that GameStop, uh, they're not any kind of cutting edge technology. And I don't mean to knock the, the company or their stores, but basically they sell used video games. People that are really in the video games, the latest cutting edge stuff, they buy that online, they download it. They don't go to a store and buy it. Just like we get our movies now via Netflix, we don't go to the, to the video rental store, you know, to pick up a VHS tape. And some guys in a Reddit forum uh, started playing with GameStop on a week ago or two weeks ago, and it was trading, I don't know, maybe 10, 20 bucks. I'll bring up a chart later on the show, guys. Uh, it's up over $300 today. 
just on just on rampant speculation. I just wanted to throw that in because you mentioned Blockbuster. So now, back to our topic. Go ahead. <laughs> okay, and so and we are we we have created a, a model now where we're going to collect people and connect people all around the world. And so you know we have you know we understand the barn bound um, barn raising story in that. This is what we need about connecting people in that. And I have a slide up now of uh, some of the members of our team and you're featured uh, uh, in that right corner. Dwayne, I, with, I uh, saw the that workers. Saturday morning. That was very kind. Thank you very much. And so, and, and we're literally uh, changing even how donation models work because we're saying, hey, can we do it differently and maybe more sustainable, uh, sustainably traditionally. And I, you know, I was pastoring for about uh, a decade back uh, several years ago and um, you know the donation model was literally everybody in the church would go out and do their jobs and you know all well and good and then come back and give a portion of whatever they were making back into our, our church and to me and you know and all of the projects that we were working on through our church and that but we never really knew how to connect uh, people financially. It was just go and figure it out by yourself, <laughs> get some money. And if you get some, give us a little portion of that. I've counseled so many people that if I could have just changed their lives by three or four or $500, I would have saved some marriages. And we've talked about that on other shows where yeah, yeah, that's uh, a lot of stresses, a lot of the stresses aren't, people don't need a million dollars to get over their stress. They need a few dollars that, you know, to try to do that. Uh, we're looking at this slide here, and I'll just go uh, kind of around the circle in, in, in here in that. In the top right corner, we have Paul and Kathy, and we'd really love for you to stop in. We have kind of a concierge service, if you will, in a, what we call our Golden Journey Zoom room, and we really invite you to come, and uh, we'll give that information a bit later on in the call, of uh, be able to come and join us, because there is, as simple as it is of us connecting, there's still... Uh, some nuance to it about how to do it so that it's effective and really moving forward. We use what's called a two by two model, meaning you're just going to bring in a, one friend or two friends and no no more in terms of your personal uh, bringing them in. But we have a way of actually doing a lot more with, with various people, depending on skill sets coming through in that. But I also realized mm, we don't have to have uh, everybody being the, the, uh, the great you know, the great recruiters, we don't need that. We need a few, but we also need a village to kind of embrace it all. And so Kathy and Paul, they, they model that beautifully in our concierge uh, golden journey uh, room and come and talk to them or I'll be there time to time and you can schedule calls with us. All of this will be supporting, uh, you know, that next bottom corner there is uh, uh, the work that you're uh, doing, Duane, in, in, uh, with your, you know, with many beautiful projects that you're involved in. And we're highlighting that because we're not uh, a donation model. We're a for-profit business model that says you can do it with heart and passion and still get the job done for uh, various things, uh, various uh, ways of sharing, but making it sustainable. Usually, typically, donations are you give the money and the next day, um, how, where does that go for them? There's, the energy is lost because we didn't connect it in a, in a different way. Uh, next on this slide, we have Sandra, who is uh, very much working behind the scenes for us and doing a lot of our uh, admin things. And then uh, uh, we have this uh, beautiful 100-year-old Jessica right next to Sandra. Uh, she's the one holding up her ID card. <laughs> That's mm -hmm. the way we've been right. collecting information. A 100-year-old uh, great-great-grandmother. And she is cash flow positive in cryptocurrency, of all things. Can you imagine that? That's so... That just kind of gives me a smile no matter which way I think about it because... If you can do it for a hundred year old, uh, you know, a uh, uh, lovely yes, great absolutely. great grandma in yeah. Ugandan village, we can do it anywhere. This is fun. And and then we have Kathy and Paul who travel the world when the days of COVID kind of kind of let release us from the, you know, being in lockdown, all of those things, and that they travel the world. And uh, Kathy, uh, in, in particular, has been just about anywhere. I can hardly name a country that she hasn't been in. Uh, she's a lover of people. And always been a great, great giver. And this is her down in Central America at a at a, some festival they were at for um, indigenous leaders in Central America. And their biggest concern was how do we protect the rainforest? And we're coming alongside that. Uh, the bottom left corner we have uh, Christopher Power, who is out of Australia, and his 
his his wife is Katai, and she's in Thailand. He had to go to Aust- back to Australia for some medical things and that. Uh, but they have a dream for their community, and we're kind of come alongside and uh, support them. But again, we're supporting the people through this business so that they can do whatever they so choose. And then a lovely family, uh, Chris Colton family, up and uh, I think he's uh, I think he's a New Yorker guy, just that just kind of a go getter kind of guy. Lovely family and that, but I'm just giving you this cross section of how we have already connecting the world, and I can go on and on with our stories. But this is how our because we have the internet, we're not localized anymore. We are globalized in the right way, where we're connecting people in the way that I think uh, you know, kind of the dream come true, where borders aren't the issue anymore. We can connect people and get true energy in a heartbeat with what we do. People register, it's free to come in, and uh, and then they begin to experience the vibrancy of uh, people connections first and money follows. That's kind of our approach with it all. So uh, that's how we do our our barn raising, if you will. And, now, uh, you, so you touched on, a, on an interesting point there, and maybe explain that a little more to folks who might be tuning in for the first time, in that mm-hmm. people can come in, they can create a free account, they can take a look around, they can ask a lot of questions, they can get their questions answered, and there's no obligation of any kind, no financial commitment. Uh, if, if you want to become part of the golden journey, if, if you are ready to step into the world of cryptocurrency, you can. Once you have all the information, once you're well informed, once you really know what you're dealing with. So maybe talk about that for a moment for folks who are tuning in for the first time. It's a, yeah, and when we're because we're talking this year that uh, you know your comments on uh, Davos and and I'm aware of those uh, all of what's going on at those levels and lots of uh, you know again it's disruptive and and yet um, nobody is denying this isn't uh, the beginning place of Bitcoin where uh, I always kind of mocked uh, the pizza story where somebody bought uh, uh, bought pizza for ten thousand coins. Mm-hmm uh that bitcoin like it was like you know pretty expensive uh pizza he actually knew what he was doing he did it with purpose and intent uh because he wanted to show that bitcoin could be used for uh actual real transaction now that was in the early days early early days and that but the some young guy he put a challenge out there on a radio show or something hey if you can uh get me some pizza i'm going to give you ten thousand bitcoin and the guy says i'll take you up on that and he uh, ordered a couple of papa john's pizzas and sent it to him and said okay where's my ten thousand bitcoin and literally, that's how the transaction happened. So it's pretty fabulous. Well, also, in the early days uh, in New York City, a lot of the bars and restaurants uh, would hang signs in the window that said, we accept Bitcoin. Now, they had no mechanism for accepting Bitcoin. And the people walking by on the street didn't have any Bitcoin to spend. But it was just the novelty, the curiosity. Wow, these people accept Bitcoin. That would get people to walk in off the street so that the hostess or the server could say, well, hi, folks, welcome, come on in, have a seat. It was a, like a conversation piece, a conversation starter. And then now, lo and behold, a few years later, people walking in off the street really do have some Bitcoin in their digital wallet. And the restauranteur or the pub owner uh, really can accept Bitcoin. There are debit cards out there now, and uh, the company... Uh, behind G99, 999. Uh, hey, have you? do you have an iPhone? I have an Android. Oh, well, here, let me, uh, I was playing with this the other, hang on one second. I'm going to go to the translator on my iPhone. Turn up the volume. Have you ever heard anyone say G999 in Mandarin? Oh, go for it. G Joe Jojo. G Joe Jojo. All righty. <laughs> uh, let's see. We can also do that in Japanese. <laughs> yes, I've heard them all. Uh, Russian, you name it. It's fun. But anyway, um, I, now I was playing with that. I lost my train of thought. Go ahead. Okay. It'll catch up well, to me in a minute. We're lit- so again, when people are coming in, they're coming in with that free registration and then we have uh, a, a little education package that comes with our G999 coins and uh, Blockchain Academy. And uh, there's a couple of other things in there that are quite valuable for it. 
but it's a one-year membership. 149 US has to be purchased in Bitcoin or Ethereum, and we, um, as a, as a, we we really take the village mentality where we we know how to even support them if they're really struggling. Having you know, even how do they get that initial Bitcoin or Ethereum to purchase? Come and talk to us. We have many many ways of supporting people we when we say no one left behind again jessica like can you imagine getting jessica <laughs> onto an exchange to buy some bitcoin to come onto our platform to be able to buy her a little package um not so much that wouldn't have worked we get to do it uh, in a way that uh, literally uh can take anybody and that's why we call it a, a you know it's really our village saying we support people so that no one has to find this incredible barrier when i got when i was started trading forex about uh, four years ago um and then uh one of the sites i was on exchanges i was on i couldn't use my credit card on, on it anymore and they were saying you can only use bitcoin or ethereum and i thought what the heck is that <laughs> i did you know i i knew the term but i did you know and it was like yeah. and how, how do i get some that, that, that was that was the biggest hurdle okay i kind of understand what it is kind of but how do i get some Yep. That used and, to be a it, real it, hurdle, it, uh, but not so, not so much. I was by myself. Yeah. Sorry, I keep... I'm That's okay. Over no, where did, where did you first uh, acquire... In, um, I've done WireX, and uh, I traded on Hugo's Way, and I traded some other ones, but it's a while now, and I haven't done it, so I can't remember where I... I actually started um, maybe BitForex or something like that at the time, mm -hmm. um, but uh, but but for me, uh, the you know KYC was a big issue for me. Uh, right. It was like I was very I was you know sixty years old, but very very fearful of all of this stuff. Well, I mean the, the, the big had, story. I had to suck it up. Yeah, the big story on behind you know cryptocurrency uh, in the beginning, part of the story, part of the allure was that. Uh, you could remain anonymous. Mm -hmm. You know, you could be a secret agent type of guy and <laughs> you can make all these transactions. And, you know, to some degree in the early days, that really was possible. And there, there are ways now still uh, to buy Bitcoin without disclosing your identity. But if you go to any of the major, quote unquote, respectable exchanges, they're going to require you to prove who you are. Uh, KYC means know your customer, and in most cases, you'll have to upload uh, a photo ID front and back, and then capture yourself on a webcam, a live shot, where you like move your head and they can see that it's really you, and that that face matches the picture on the driver's license. Uh, that's Coinbase uses that, and all of the other major exchanges have varying degrees of KYC, but the the idea behind, you know, this anonymous currency, that dog won't hunt anymore. Uh, they just shut down another uh, big uh, dark web marketplace. Most folks have heard of Silk Road and uh, mm -hmm. Brett Ulrich, I believe. His last name was yeah, Ulrich. Is he, uh, is, he, he, is he still in jail? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, sure. yeah he, got like... he got convicted of murder. Uh, yeah. Oh, really? Okay. I didn't, yeah, I didn't guys, even know that. If you ever read the story of Ross, that's it. Yeah. Ross Ulbrich, Silk Road. Yeah. Google that and you'll find uh, somebody that's written a, a full story on Ross and everything he went through and this incredible empire that he built on the dark web. You could buy anything from, you know, heroin to cocaine. You could hire a hitman. I mean, guns explosive device, you name it, you could buy it there. Uh, and everything was done using Bitcoin. And he eventually got shut down. And I don't want to spoil the story for you, but he he ran this empire off of his laptop. I mean, this was a huge, huge deal. And it was, and, I, and again, I don't want to spoil the story for anybody who doesn't know it, but Google it up. And there's probably a book out there, but I don't think you have to buy the book. There's probably like a full length article written by, I don't know, the New York Times or someone, but it's a really interesting story. And there may even be a documentary on Netflix or something. Uh, go ahead. So uh, that 
uh, yeah, those stories are very, very real of the development. Uh, let's face it, when you're bringing in something new, you're going to get all kinds of people showing up. A lot of, you know, sadly, a lot of our video technology and streaming and all of that, that actually started in the, uh, sadly to say, in the porn industry. Uh, yeah, yeah. And uh, they, they, did, they did a good chunk of what we're enjoying today with Pioneer uh, with the money from that industry because they were looking for ways to get their product out, if you will. And, uh, you know, and that's, um, but something starts somewhere and now, and then we tame it and bring it back into uh, some, something much more wholesome <laughs> to say the least in that. Um, so sometimes the history is a little bit uh, concerning um, and then you have to say, but you know, where have we gotten since then? And uh, because something starts with, you know, kind of a corrupted model, if you will, but uh, we get to actually say, is this something that can come mainstream? And I believe this is the year uh, Dwayne, that we're going mainstream with cryptocurrency. And I believe what we're doing here, we, we aren't the place to do it, but it's such a soft landing where you come in, get an educational little package, come learn with us. And while you're doing that, these little education packages that we have will begin as we build our team and the way we flow with how we build our teams, you begin earning uh, some cryptocurrency. I think you experienced that the other day when you had gone into Anne Marie's account and yeah, said, I hadn't uh, logged in didn't. in a while. Yeah, correct. <laughs> and so all of a sudden you looked at it and said, I've got, I haven't really, you know, we're, you're just gearing up for what we're doing right now. And there was already commissions uh, or rewards in Bitcoin or Ethereum uh, in her account. And yeah, that and, feels and I, I had good, not, I think. I had not personally signed anyone up. I had not walked anyone through the process Uh it just kind of fell into place. And, and that's part of the work that the Golden Journey is doing. And in the top right uh, there, Kathy and Paul, uh, the picture that you're looking at, they keep that Zoom room open, uh, gosh, a lot of hours a day. I don't know how many hours a day it is, but they're there. And if you want to go and ask people who can actually answer your question, so often in these groups on Facebook and other places, I see people asking questions and they never get a decent answer or the correct answer. But if you go to the Zoom room uh, where Path Kathy and Paul hang out a lot of hours every day, uh, they're real people. You can see them on your computer screen. You can talk with them and uh, you can get real answers to your questions so that you're able to make a well-informed decision. Uh, you know, as some people I'm sure still don't own any cryptocurrency. Uh, some people still don't understand that it is going to become and an integral part of our life uh, in the coming years. A lot of people don't use credit cards, but credit cards are a thing. They've been a thing for a long time and credit cards, of course, are a thing that can cause you trouble and grief, uh, but many people don't use them. And so there'll be people who choose not to use cryptocurrency, uh, but more and more because of the uh, ease of use, instantaneous transactions, uh, being able to, you know, send money around the world to a loved one without uh, having to use a third party, without without having to go to the Western Union or the MoneyGram window. Uh, mass adoption is around the corner, and so you know, uh, when we saw the dot com boom. Uh, everybody was like, wow, how did I not see that coming? How, why didn't I participate in that? And then, of course, it fell because people realized that, you know, businesses with no revenue can't continue to exist. And so there was a big shakeout, but there's still companies around today that were part of the, of the Internet boom that ran up into 2000 before the crash. And they're still today. And... Uh, there were a lot of there were a lot of winners and a and a lot that didn't make it. I lost your screen, David. Did you just send it back to me? Yeah, no, I just uh, I had shut it off there while we were chatting because I wanted to get to a, a different screen to make sure I was at the right spot that I wanted to highlight some things for. Us. Okay, well, I think I need to shoot. No, I need no. to send it back to you. Hang on. Okay. One. No, no, you got it. You still got it. Okay. No, I, I've got it. No, I I I just toggled myself off. Okay. Because I wanted to uh, get into. Okay, we are connecting people. We are. Uh, doing this in a very safe landing for people because we I've realized uh, this is a big thing for people. It feels very risky. It feels 
unknown. And how do we alleviate fear by giving people information in a nice, uh, simple way, in a very, uh, really in a very concerned, you know, a, a, just a caring way, the way that we're able to do it. And because we've chosen to build uh, different than any other networkers out there, some networkers would say, you know, we're, we're kind of silly with what we do, and yet we probably have one of the strongest builds out there of uh, what's being done in terms of people connecting and making money. Everybody is making uh, Bitcoin and Ethereum in our team, unless you just joined the other day, that kind of thing uh, with it and that. Uh, it's very, very powerful, but it's not going to make you a millionaire. It's going to make you very secure though like it's going to make you really rock solid financially as we build and share lives you know and share with each other around the world and we're also creating in our model uh just that that graphic i had with the pictures of all the people in that we have teams of you know even just as um as small as 15 or 20 that might have four or five six different uh countries involved in those teams because of the way we place people throughout because once you've enrolled two people uh, yourself personally, or maybe we've added some in ourselves and that that's not, you know, you're just going to keep going deeper and deeper. And it's a, uh, so it's a very, very powerful model. It's really based on uh, Luke 10. That's where I was inspired by where Jesus sent out uh, the 72 two by two. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, and the best, uh, I mean, our world is designed by in, in a two by two model from whether it's couples uh, getting, you know, getting married, um, you know, our whole genealogy of our family line. If you go through your family tree, you go, you know, mom and dad, grand, you know, two sets of grandparents, right. and then on and on. You do that nine levels, and you actually could see it on the screen here. You do it nine levels, and what do you've got? You've got two, and then the four, eight, 16. It's just this doubling model. I have my grandson, Ethan, who's uh, coming up on about 11 months, almost 11 months old now. He started out as uh, just that one little guy and one little cell and double, 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 double. And, um, you know, that's how it works. And when you total, because our commission model goes from level one through nine with a very generous portion down at the bottom here of 6% and 4%. But the two by two, if you total that two plus four plus eight down to five, 12, that gives you 1022. So that's where that number 1022 came from company has a very generous uh, commission rewards model of 44% in total in this. So that's pretty fabulous with it all. Now that 18%, and, uh, that just came into play uh, in the past week, right? It was 10% prior to that on level one. Yeah, and uh, so that's there as well. Um, and uh, obviously they want people really being encouraged right from the start. The first thing you do, you don't even have to have purchased anything. At level one, you could literally bring a friend in and get an 18% commission uh, from them without you having ever even made a purchase on that. And that's part of a little bit of MLM uh, uh, regulations as well that we're following. We're very, very compliant. We have uh, one of the top um, uh, network marketing lawyers in the world working with us to make sure everything we're doing is uh, dotting the I's, crossing the T's, and because we are a global business and we want to do it right, and they're really uh, taking their time and uh, just put a qualifier around there. We're, we're in pre-launch right now, going officially full launch in March. Like we're working, it's viable right now. It's, it's things are happening and it's just getting better and better. Uh, but we're also rolling it out in such a way that every dot is, uh, every I is dotted and every T is crossed. And, uh, and when you look at that commission at 18%, you can see where people could get tempted uh, to say, mm, I'm just going to do more than two because, you know, I want to get paid on Friday. And we'd well, encourage I, you know, people. To be honest, if I were a young man uh, and I mm -hmm. saw the potential and the opportunity here, uh, you mentioned the $149 package. There's also a $1,000 package, which steps you up a level. That's right. Uh, you know, 18% of a thousand dollars is 180 bucks. Uh, I mean, mm -hmm. you're talking to a guy who has sold vacuum cleaners door to door uh, when he was 18 years old. So I know what it is uh, to work hard for a living. And we were selling Kirby vacuum cleaners back then. And this had to be 1976, 75, 76. And those things were a thousand bucks back then. And I forget what we made uh, when we sold one, but Again, if I were a young man and looking to aggressively grow a business and create income, uh, selling one of those thousand dollar packages uh, that generates a commission of 180 bucks, you know, close two deals in the morning and two deals in the afternoon. 
Uh, and because it leads to residual income, uh, a person could get pretty well pretty quick. It, it really can do it fairly quickly in that the challenge is that when you do more than uh, two people, and we and you mentioned the word residual income, uh, a lot of and there's a, a term called either going building deep or building wide, uh -huh. and some people will say, well, I'm going to put in 10, 20, 30 on my L1 because I want that 18 percent. The reality is if you drill down into it, you look at uh, level eight and nine where you have the 256 people, 512. Quite frankly, I want 512 people earning me 6% more than 20 people earning me 18%. And you do, if you do the math on that, hmm, it's actually- And the beauty, of, the beauty of this is that it can service either person. The young aggressive salesman who wants to do a lot of deals a day, you know, he can approach mm -hmm. it one way. And then there's the method of the golden journey, which you just explained. You'd rather have 512 people, you know, paying you 6% commission than, you know, having to hustle every day uh, to keep that level one going and then to manage and help uh, all those in the various levels build. So, yeah, I, I think it's good that uh, it can service either type of person, whatever your goal is. If you, if you fit yep. in with that aggressive model, it's there. If the golden journey is more appealing to you, uh, which is what we're a part of and what we're doing, uh, then, and then that's there as well. I'm looking for, for me, uh, I'm, I'm that guy that says, I want the people I brought in today to be part of this next year, the year after that, and the year after that. I want, I don't want a one-time uh, good commission. I want a commission that renews every year. And do you know how people, why people would renew a, a yearly membership? because they made enough money to renew it. They're feeling good, they're happy. And network marketing, when they go wide, what happens is you get a 97% failure rate of any team building. Mm -hmm. And I mm -hmm. prefer a 90, I prefer a 97 or 100% success rate for everybody uh, buying, buying it. So you can see my bias in there where I think about it, but I'm, I'm playing the infinite game. I'm not playing the short-term game here in that. Uh, but we do see uh, there is those options for people in that. But I'm saying, but I would say, if you're trying to, if you're thinking long term, uh, this is the only way you can actually get it to really work for you long term. And that, and you don't get the delusion disgruntled uh, ones that happen because you're working together rather than working as a silo. I prefer working in a village, and that's my preference, obviously. And everyone has to decide for themselves how they want to do it. Uh, but you also have to realize when people build that, build it wide, uh, they're also saying the failure rate. When somebody's saying they're making millions in network marketing, that means they have 97% of the people under them have not. Yeah. Well, uh, well that's they're actually we, we all, and they're gone. Uh, there's, there's a great podcast out there called, it's not chasing the dream, building the dream. It's a, it's a, they did uh, 10 episodes. It's been a couple years ago, but it's really, really good. And it goes through the whole history of multi-level marketing from the very first guy that ever came up with the concept and the idea. Let me ask my, uh, let me ask my app here if it'll tell me real quick. Is it building the dream? No, I know what I'll do. I'll just search. Multi. Let me find it here. The Dream. It's simply, the podcast is simply called The Dream. If if you have access to Apple iTunes, you'll find it there. And you'll find it on any of the major uh, podcast sites, platforms. In season one, where is it? Let me see. Season one. Well, they're not giving me a good description here. Anyway, if you're if you've ever been in in, in network marketing or multi-level marketing, if you've ever done the Amway or the Herbalife or any of these other things, if you have an, an interest, not maybe because you want to go out and do it, but the history of it, how it developed and evolved over the ages, uh, it's a really good podcast. I highly recommend it. It's simply called The Dream. 
So just launch any podcast player and search The Dream. And then there's a television program. Try to remember what network it was on. It's called Becoming Becoming a God in Central on Becoming a God in Central Florida. There we go. Uh, this dark comedy series stirs Kirsten Dunn as Crystal Stubbs, a minimum wage water park employee who lies, schemes, and cons her way up the ranks of the cultish multi-billion dollar pyramid scheme that drove her family to ruin in the first place. It's on Showtime, on Becoming a God in Central Florida. It is, it's a comedy, it's a dark comedy, but it's riveting. Uh, you'll want to binge watch it. You'll watch the first episode and you'll go right into episode two and three. So watch that. Listen to the 10 episode podcast, The Dream, season one. Season one is where they deal with this topic. Not that you want to become a part of that, not that you are chasing that dream, uh, but just the rich history and all that's involved. And then you can look at what the Golden Journey is doing, how this company is built, how they're bringing people in, how they're connecting people through cryptocurrency, and you'll you'll have a greater appreciation for the golden journey once you understand the dark side of everything you've ever heard about network marketing, multi-level marketing, pyramid schemes, etc. So, have you uh, by chance seen that show, David? No, I haven't, but I'm gonna, gonna, it's on oh, my gotta, uh, list you, now. you got to punch it up. It's good. Uh, I, a podcast I listen to on a regular basis. I heard a guy mention it, so I didn't think too much of it, but I went, I watched episode, and I think over three days, I managed to watch the whole season. Which <laughs> Sounds is a good. good I love, question. I love gonna, that. Is there going to have a second season? Hmm, <laughs> I'm looking now. Set in a small yeah, Orlando so town in 1992. Uh, okay. Every season well, and episode available instantly. Uh, looks like season one. No, wait. How many seasons did I watch? Wow, I may have some more episodes to watch. Oh, no, it's available uh, February 2nd is when the next. Oh, no, January 31st. There's new episodes I haven't seen. Oh, wow. This is good. Okay. All right. Back to you. Fun. Okay. We're going to be um, kind of changing gears here a little bit. I wanted to highlight a, a book that I would, um, you know, because we are dealing with cryptocurrency. We're really talking about what is money. Uh, and that's where we, like a lot of people, like we use money. But when you ask people, what is it? And they'd say, well, it's a bill or it's this. But you need, we need to get a little bit of more history under our belt. Uh, with understanding money, and uh, I would highly, highly recommend uh, this book that I'm uh, showing up on the slide here, uh, Money, the True Story of a Made-Up Thing. I, I've listened to it on the on Audible, J Jacob Colstein. He does uh, uh, a podcast uh, on uh, NPR called Planet Money. Oh, I love and that. I love just... that podcast. I listen to uh, the new episodes whenever they come out. Okay, so get this book it's like to me it's required reading i should every oh that's the host every, right there jacob goldstein exactly yeah and okay. every everybody above the age of 13 years old 14 years old should get it thought that they would maybe but i believe i should like this should be curriculum to me in a, in a high school we need to get better better tools in our kids hands and this is one of them but he goes through the whole history of even that he, he does one on the story of light and anyway i'm not going to give it all away read it it gets into the uh, development right up to current day. This is a very current book talking about 2020. And uh, so it's fresh, it's alive, and this guy brings the goods, no question about it. And I learned a heck of a lot. And I thought, I, you know, I have a pretty good grounding on some of this stuff. And he just brought more to the table for mm -hmm. me, yeah. gave the whole, the last uh, quarter of the book is getting into current events. And uh, he talks about the cyberpunks and the development of Bitcoin and all of that as mm -hmm. well. Tremendous mm -hmm. history. But we have to remember, money really is whatever we choose to value and how we, we do that. So I really wanted to highlight that uh, for and your listeners as well. I, I think it's required reading. If, okay. if you guys want to save some money and get a, a free copy of that book, uh, point your browser to audible 
audibletrial.com. That's one word, audibletrial.com slash CFRN. That's going to give you a free trial of the Audible experience. You can download one free audiobook of your choice. It's a two-week trial. If you don't cancel in the first two weeks, then they're going to assume that you want to become a permanent member of their book club. Let me just tell you that up front. Now, you can cancel any time during those first two weeks, and you'll never be billed a dime. You won't pay anything, and you get to keep the audiobook as a gift of CFRN and Audible. So, audibletrial.com slash CFRN. Back to you, David. Okay, and uh, so I thought, uh, but in closing, let's uh, kind of work through, you know, what's the next steps? Where are we going with all of this? And how do we make these connections? How do we support, uh, you know, what you're doing? And uh, so we can bring people in through uh, this program here, but we also want to make sure that we're making it thrive for you. So we uh, but we, we really do believe in a concierge kind of service in that because uh, we don't want people just sending out links randomly and kind of traditional models where you just, you know, just, you know, kind of spam everybody with a link and hope some, and so hope something sticks. But you don't build great anything when you do it that way. You might uh, make a buck or two, but you'll never build any uh, um, residual and you won't make real strength with that. So uh, we have a, a place to come to. We have uh, all of the, the information's on the slide here. And I know from the background, you can get it all out there for everyone. But we wanted to make sure that we got that highlighted for you because um, this is a village model. We, we'd like to get to know you. We're not trying to dig too far in or anything like that. We'll, we, you know, we try to make people as comfortable as possible. But we also wanna be able to show uh, how to come in and then how to place people because it really, as easy as two by two is to conceptually say, you know, two plus two times two times two times two, that's real simple. But there is a little bit of nuance for it of, as to how the registrations go in that. And uh, so when, when people can come into our, our, our model, they're able to do that. We don't even require, like it, for the registrations, we don't require a lot of information. You see it there, just a, a first name, middle name. If, if there's one listed on your ID, uh, those kinds of things and that, but, but so, and an email, and a phone number and that's about it and then we, we we can set up accounts and we would always do with anything that's associated with cfrn that's why we want the subject in the email to us uh that we make sure it's going into your uh what you're the work that you're doing uh duane and Anne marie and uh, all of your crew we want to support them in every way support you in every way possible because that builds strength throughout but uh this is your platform and we respect it we honor it and we will make sure that that happens as well if people come in through this way with us um and uh it truly is uh meant to it's it's different i don't question our differences i actually am very proud of our differences because uh our world needs to calm down uh let's uh share cooperatively rather than competitively uh let's make sure as you do with your uh, with all the people who are, you know, you're enjoying uh, training, developing in that, you just say, hey, if you got an issue, come and talk to us. We'll, we'll, we'll sort it all out in that. Well, we'd like you to come and talk to us before we have to sort it out even. Yeah, uh, I mean, kind of like the Zoom room, we have a Telegram channel, our discussion group, which is open 24-7, 365. And there's almost always somebody hanging out there. And because all of my students learn the exact same strategy and methodology, if a newcomer comes along and has a question, you know, somebody that I've trained is usually there and can answer the question if I'm not around to answer it myself. And, and we're doing that in Telegram that, as well. With yeah, 10 you're 20, in Telegram, with 10 you're 20. on the Zoom call. Uh, so we, yeah, we, we're, in the, Go yeah, we're in the midst of developing our website uh, and uh, some pretty fabulous stuff that we're coming down the road with and that and uh, some just you know, uh, you know, I, I'm a big follower of uh, Seth Godin, who is always like, "Hey, just get, just start, just get going, mm -hmm. and then figure it, out, and then keep developing, keep growing, keep progressing, and that because you can sit on an idea forever, and that's it. You've sat on your idea, and you kind of crushed it. Get it out there, get it in the living world, get people talking, sharing back and forth, and get some uh, vibrancy with that. So we're building, we're growing this in a very methodical way, and getting more streamlined as we go." 
Um, and uh, but at the same time, we're we're getting stuff done. Our our team over the last two months has grown to uh, just over I think it's around 633 people or something to this you know in two months. Nice. And uh, but with ev with everybody fabulously connected, everybody um, we're breaking all of the um, uh, network marketing traditional models of uh, uh, how how teams grow in that. And uh, I'd say we've got something that's. Uh, could be a game changer even in the industry. I might be over speaking that right now. I don't want to, you know, sit, you know, move ahead of myself, but I got to feel that we're giving a better, a different option. And that's to me is what, what, you know, kind of a highlight that way, giving people good options for seeing things differently. And then every adult gets to choose what's the option that suits them to the, to the best. And that's, you know, we're not here to control or dictate or anything like that. We just want to come alongside and say, here's an option. You might want to consider it, and uh, and then we can support you in every way possible within that. And uh, so that's what we're doing. That's the information on. Uh, again, I should put that back up on the screen there for everyone. Uh, and uh, you're welcome to come and chat with us anytime. We do a Saturday morning call at uh, noon Eastern under that same uh, link with, with the Golden uh, Journey uh, uh, Zoom room. So that's uh, happens on Saturdays. And we're trying to work out a few uh, timelines for during the week as well to support people. And I would suggest even after, uh, you know, an hour or two after this call, if people want to come in and chat with us, we'll have the, uh, uh, the room will be open. I think we have another call that we're listening in on right now. So we have a few things going on, but, um, you know, click and see if you can get in. And if nobody's there to uh, answer, uh, come back an hour or two later and probably somebody will be there. Um, so we're, again, we're just here to support and we're really here, here to support uh, the work and the, the major ministries that are involved in this. So we're not uh, trying to fund uh, the ministries. We're trying to fund the people who are supporting the ministries in a sustainable way. So does that make sense when I say it that way? It makes perfect sense. And I really think you guys are doing a, a fantastic job. Uh, guys, there's no obligation. There's no commitment. You can just come, you take a look, ask questions, get answers, you know, think about the answers, meditate on them, you know, pray about, you know, whether this is uh, right for your life plan or not, and uh, at least you're able to make a well-informed decision, and it doesn't have to cost you anything. David, I appreciate you coming and spending time with us. Wednesdays with David. We look forward to next week. Thanks, Dwayne. It was great being here with you as well. All right. Goodbye, buddy. everyone. God bless. Take care. Okay. Take care. All right. I'm going to grab the charts back. I'll grab the screen back. And real quick, let's take a peek at those charts. Daily chart, okay, see where are we at? The BBC, price always reverts to the mean. On all of these pullbacks, we close the session above the BBC. Got to go all the way back to October to find the last time a red candle closed below the BBC. Today could be that day. We're sitting right on top of the daily BBC. We've got a, which is 37.82. We got a low on the session, 37.59 half. We've still got two more hours in, or three more hours in today's session. Global markets close at 5 p.m. Eastern. Stocks stop at 4 p.m. Eastern. Futures continue to trade to 4.15. Then there's a 15 minute break. Futures crank back up at 4.30 p.m. Eastern. We continue to 5 p.m. Eastern. And then 5 p.m. Eastern, that will end the Wednesday session. Hour break, and then tonight at 6 p.m. Eastern, that starts the Thursday session, and that's when we'll get our new candle. So what we're watching to see is, do we close for the first time since October of last year below the BBC. If we do, then support, if it hasn't already been taken out, is at today's low. And then the low of January 18th, which is significant in that it's also Fibonacci price extension, which was good resistance on the way up, support on this pullback, See how support came, this pullback came right back to that 50% Fibonacci price extension and the BBC. 
below the BBC this time. So if this area right here, if it doesn't hold, if we close below and the drop to this support level doesn't hold, then the major support, 24% Fibonacci price retracement. Now, this will be good for a bounce if we get there. This will be good for a significant bounce because traders around the world watch a daily chart. Traders around the world use fibs. Now, this, these fibs, this 24% that I'm talking about, this is the last leg up. It's not the entire market since its inception. It's from this low to the high put in yesterday. From this low, which was put in October 30th, to the new all-time historic intraday high put in yesterday. And here's the BBC, that 50% price extension, and the 24% retracement. If we make it to the 24% retracement, which is the shallowest possible Fibonacci retracement, watch out because there will be a beautiful bounce to the upside, unless something really unusual and bad happens. News can come out at any time. When there is news, expected or unexpected, we don't trade the news. We don't even trade the reaction to the news. We trade the follow through to the reaction to the news. Let's peek at our 30 minute chart again real quick. Okay, last night's concierge trade alert was to be short 38.19. We had a five point drop to the weekly trading zone at 13 slash 14. That's right there, that little piece, $250 per contract traded. If you've earned the right to trade two contracts, then that's 500 bucks. And it increases with each contract you trade. So we talked about price. Would it make it up to the BBC? If so, we would expect another leg to the downside and we also said at the beginning of the show if price can't break away from this weekly zone at 37.88 slash 89 then we catch another leg from here and that's what has happened now red and falling that's resistance okay but you want the perfect scenario on a short is you want price and the steps and the step line on the left side of red and falling okay now we already talked about the step line crossing over and the chart giving you an exit signal but a different dynamics about to come into play it's in play instead of price being on the left side of red and falling it's right on top of it so while red and falling represents bearishness and resistance in this instance, it can act as support up here. Blue and climbing is bullish, right? Represents support. Red and falling is resistance, support, blue and climbing. Once blue and climbing got on top of price, see what happened? See this big 30 minute doji? It wasn't able to get through. Over here, we're riding the back of blue and climbing all the way up. And then price starts to walk sideways, step line crosses over. Blue and climbing is now blue and flat above price, not beside it, above it. Resistance sends you right back to the BBC where we expect to find good support to prove otherwise. Caught the bounce. If we should overcome the BBC, we've got a weekly zone 38.13 slash 14. And then above that, this trend line. Important prices, important areas are almost always tested. At some point, we will come back and test this 38.19 number. Chances are by then, we'll have new CTAs in place because 
I published that static report every night shortly after the Globex open. So a final recap on today's markets. Logic 247. Our round-the-clock e-mini alert service. Since Sunday night at 6 p.m. Eastern, we've issued 41 alerts. Nine never triggered. Still waiting on one. 31 actionable. Five stopped out. 16% of actionable alerts. Based on not risking more than $300 per contract per trade. Less when possible. Very important to understand. If you've been on the trial and you're ready to become a passport holder, which is a lifetime membership, you purchase a passport, we have no upsells, we have no discoveries every other week, we have nothing else that you must buy, we, in fact, we have nothing else. We should get some t-shirts or something or some coffee mugs and you'd have something to buy. If you're ready to become a passport holder, you can just go straight to eminifuturestrading.com eminifuturestrading.com If you have questions, you can call Valerie at 949-42-E-MINI. You can send an email to support at cfrn.net. If you've never taken our trial, you can go to eminitrainingschool.com eminitrainingschool.com Spend five days with us in our luxurious live e-mini training room. For five days, we'll treat you just like a member. You'll have access to the class, to the room each morning, charts, indicators. We'll teach you as much as we can about the strategy in five days. You'll have access to all of the alerts, the around-the-clock alerts, the static report, everything. The only thing you don't have is access to the members only workshop every Thursday night at 9 p.m. Eastern. So five days, we treat you like a king, and then you have to make a well-informed decision if what we do is right for you. If it is, just go to eminifuturestrading.com, click the button, and once you become a member, Valerie will send you a wealth of information, links and passwords and everything that you need to get started. Now, there's no overnight get rich quick here. This is a process. This is a job, okay? Our goal is to teach you how to read the chart, how to use our indicators and strategy, and ultimately how to find these opportunities yourself, okay? Every morning in the live training room, Michael is teaching you how to, f how to execute on the opportunity. Around the clock, I'm showing you where the opportunity is. When your phone or tablet or PC makes the telegram sound, dee dee dee, that's a call for you to go look at your chart, look at the alert, see the opportunity. I want you to see the opportunity before you pull the trigger. That's part of the learning process. Now, when you first become a member, I don't want you trading live. I don't want you blowing up another account. I want you to put together 10 consecutive days in a row where you reach your goal in 10 trades or less. Only after you've put together those 10 consecutive days do I want you to even think about going live. When you go live, you go live with one contract and you stick with one contract until you've increased your account balance by $2,000. That's how you earn the right to trade two contracts with profit you earned in the market. Our blueprint will notify you when it's time for number three, number four, number five, and so on. But you only add one at a time and you only add with profits you earned in the market. Along with everything you see on the screen, you also get unlimited access to one-on-one -on -one mentoring sessions with myself, Michael, Valerie. All you got to do is book it. Okay? Okay. Time now for our good word for the day. Yesterday, we started talking about thinking realistically, both in life and in trading. It's important to have 
realistic expectations. Otherwise, you're going to be sad and disappointed. Proverbs 22, 3. A prudent person foresees danger and takes precautions. When we first look at the chart, what do we do every day? We go look at the daily chart. Because you can see things on a daily chart that you can't see on the smaller time frame. We want to know where danger lies. And by danger, I simply mean obstacles. If we're going along, we want to know where those major obstacles are overhead to a long trade. And if we're in a short trade, we need to know where those important levels of support are to the downside. That's what the higher elevation look gives you. It helps you to be well prepared. A prudent person foresees danger and takes precautions. Proverbs 22, 3. So if you agree that you need to learn to think realistically in all areas of your life, I've got three things for you that realistic thinking will do for you. Number one, it will give you a sense of security. When you have thought through the worst that can happen and developed contingency plans to meet it, you become more confident and secure. It's reassuring to know that you are unlikely to be surprised. Disappointment is the difference between expectations and reality. Thinking realistically minimizes the difference between the two. Number two, it will give you credibility. Leaders who are continually surprised by the unexpected soon lose their credibility in the eyes of their followers. On the other hand, leaders who think realistically and plan accordingly position themselves to succeed. That gives their followers confidence in them. So before you invite anyone else to be part of your vision or your project, ask yourself, is it possible? Have I identified and explained the pros and cons of achieving it? Do I have a solid foundation to build on? Thomas Edison said, the value of a good idea is in using it. So three things realistic thinking will do for you. Number one, give you a sense of security. Number two, will give you credibility. Number three, it will help you to make an idea usable by taking away the wish factor. Most ideas and efforts don't accomplish their intended results because they rely too much on what we wish rather than what is. You can't build a house in midair. It needs a solid foundation. Ideas and plans are the same. They need something concrete on which to build and thinking realistically provides that solid foundation. Solomon put it this way, a prudent person foresees danger and takes precautions. The simpleton goes blindly on and suffers the consequences. So the word for today is think realistically. That's our good word for the day. Thanks so much for tuning in. Whoever you are, wherever you are, may God continue to richly bless you with his mercy and with his grace. And I'll see you at the bell. Remember this. There is no greater return on investment than to see a human life changed and given hope. As always, pray hard and trade safe. 
Any financial information discussed on this show is simply the opinion of our host, Dwayne Reeves, his co-hosts, and guests. To learn more about trading e-mini futures or to take a one-week free trial in our live trading room, call 1-866-928-3310. 866-928-3310. Information discussed on this radio program should not be construed as a recommendation to buy or sell any security. Always do your own due diligence and consult with a licensed securities broker or financial planner before making any investment decision. 